Okay, this one's gonna be a story about me. I'm a little bit lost. Never thought I'd be here. Two and a half thousand Ks. Five years of trying to work out where I am and what's going on, and what's eventuated, what's happened. There's no sense to it. I've never worked it out. Probably because he, he has not wanted to contact me through, you know, the bad memory aspect of it. The progression that it was happening, which was doubling in size basically every second day, within five to six days it would go right around my leg and they'd have to do something about it, which was amputate my foot. When I did move back to Adelaide, I went through a very, very dark place. And Brad was one of the very few people who was just there for me. He rode out that storm. And now that he's going through bad times, it's time for me to do the same for him. one day and everything's I've just been cane harvesting for the last six months and everything seems to be going very well I'm driving okay learning the ropes very quickly just a normal job to me everything's fine then all of a sudden I realize I'm feeling a little bit ill one morning don't think anything of it I'm first been out of the paddock I get feel a little bit queasy when I leave the paddock. I drive down a straight road and then realise a couple of seconds later I'm off the road and the tractor's not in a good place and I need to get it back onto the road and something's happened. I think I've passed out. I'm not too sure if I've blacked out or I've passed out. I know I haven't fallen asleep because it's very early morning still, the first job of the day. So, of course... The tractor goes off the road a little bit and I manage to get the tractor back on, but the trailer rolls over. The trailer's full of cane. Doesn't do any damage. Makes a big mess, of course. We clean up the mess. The boss isn't very happy. I've just rolled his track, rolled his trailer. I'm not very happy with myself, but more so not happy with myself. I don't know why it's happened. And I'm very concerned about this feeling I've had just beforehand and the whole why I've passed out, if I've passed out or why I've passed out. So of course I drive the tractor back to the parking lot and tell the boss, I'm sorry, but I have to leave and go to hospital and get checked out. And of course I turn up to the hospital, I get a few blood tests done. It comes back with a high white blood cell count. The high white blood cell count can mean many different things.
when I found out Brad had had an accident at the wheel, yeah, I didn't really know how to take it, you know. We've got that much going on during the day, and being that I was underneath the harvester at the time and filling up, you know, I, I couldn't just go out and see if he was okay and... All we knew was Brad had rolled the tractor and didn't know whether he was hurt, bleeding, broken, anything. And like, when we were pulling up, I could see that he, he was obviously shaken, but all right, because he was walking around and wasn't didn't appear to be hurt. But my first reaction was I had to ask, I hope you weren't on the phone, you know, get being distracted. Because that is quite common. And that's when I found out he'd actually fallen asleep at the wheel. And that's, he's very lucky, you know, he, he could have quite easily died. Come can't afford to be falling asleep behind the wheel of any sort of vehicle, let alone a heavy vehicle. I had no test much more. Yeah, I think it I think it done more than just rattled him, you know, I think it played with his head a little bit. Because after that, you know, not not a great deal was wrong with with the trailer or the tractor. I think it was two hours later, everything was up and running again, and you could just see he, he, he had done it for him. You know, couldn't focus on what was going on, and I think it scared him, to be honest. So since then, you say you've seen him at a bit of a loss? Yeah, I... It's, it's an entirely different person. You know, he has his moments, of course, you know, where you can tell clearly, oh, today's a good day for him, you know. He appears to be almost back to his normal cheery self. But other days, it, it's, he's a shell. It's like he's an empty shell compared to the Brad I know. He seems to be lacking drive, you know, and the mood, his moods, they're just, he's not the same Brad. And I know it's not just because of the accident, you know. It can't be. Knowing Brad the way that I that I knew him as a, as a almost like a brother, you know, we were that close to mates, or well, still are. Before working in the machinery, you know, it after his accident, it just it it, it almost hurt me to see how bad it's changed him. Yeah, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about the tractor accident um, until you told me. Yeah, no one, no one had mentioned it, or I hadn't seen any. I don't know if it was mentioned at all. Or, yeah, it. Uh, and that's something that could have stemmed from the spider bite, possibly. Yeah, see, I, I didn't hear about the tractor accident as well, so I, I don't know what happened in the tractor accident, but. Any accident with a tractor can't be good. You know, but being Brad, the skateboarder from way back, you're tough as nails, mate, you know. You fall down, you just get back up, and that's what Brad's doing, and I hope he can just get back on top and, you know, start kickflipping again.
Shogun's. Mm. That's a new thing in my life. I'm still getting used to it. At the moment, it's not affecting me too much. I mean, my eyes are drying out at night. My mouth's always dry. My teeth are falling out. And they're slowly removing them. My body's rejecting a bit. But physically, my fitness hasn't gone down at all. It's actually got better. So, the play it by day. I'll see what symptoms I'll get and I'll deal with them. What kind of tests did they do? What kind of results did you get in the test? They did the um, liver functions, kidney functions, heart rate, blood sugars, everything like that. Well, you standard tests. Everything went past flying colours. I've never drank my whole life. Um, Shogun syndrome, is it? Uh, 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 no, no. This, this is the first I'm finding out about it. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot happen in Brad's life that I don't know about recently, obviously. I don't hold that against him. He's he's moved on. I'm, I'm obviously a bad memory for him. That's, that's fine. I accept that. There's no, uh, um, no loss of friendship. Still love the boy. I didn't until you told me what had happened. Yeah, I, hadn't, I didn't realise any any of that. Yeah. So yeah, a bit shocked about that, and obviously another condition he's got to deal with. Brad's that type of person that he feels he doesn't want to burden people with his own problems, you know. Which in turn, sometimes I guess he keeps things to himself, or and having that distance between me and Brad, obviously when you do talk to each other you sort of sometimes you skip important things or the other person might think it's important and you sort of just you know it's just about catching up at that brief moment they had mentioned cancer i could have cancer they mentioned a few different big diseases that i'd never heard of before um that it could have been the cause of the white high white blood cell count. And then one of the last ones was just out of the blue. He just mentioned Chogren syndrome because it also said I'd had trouble with my teeth. The teeth were um, starting to fall out and feel very loose. So he said that it could be Chogren syndrome. And, of course, as soon as I heard that word, I knew it was the same thing that mum had. So I had to accept, I told him that my, I think my mum has that disease. So he tells me that, well, the odds have just gone up for you. But the doctor also didn't know too much about it. So he decided to jump online, have a quick research to find out that one in 10 people is male that gets it, nine out of 10 are female that get it. It usually occurs later on in age, later on in life, and is interrupted by a different medical something happening in your life can interrupt it and start the whole process and that that's basically what's happened to me from the spider bite by the sound of it so the spider bites now brought on a lot of different things brought on the Sjogren syndrome just made my post-traumatic stress disorder slightly different again but everything always changes different Different incidents will change me. What are the symptoms? What are, what are the effects? What's going on? I still haven't read a lot about the Sjogren syndrome yet, but what I'm finding out, the symptoms basically depend on what stage you've got, stage one or stage two. At the moment, it looks like, from what I can diagnose myself just on the internet, it looks like a stage one. The stage one is the dry mouth, the different... Um, Body effects, my immune system now thinks there's something wrong with my body, so it's attacking itself all the time. The effects of my teeth are the worst. After the spider bite, I noticed the progression of decay and they felt sore and loose. It was 
straight away within days after the spider bite and all the medications I'd taken. So uh, this is my board that was given to me by um, IXO. It's a full carbon uh, racing board, pretty pimp. And I got some Scala trucks, uh, best trucks you'll get. And uh, Colt wheels. This machine is worth uh, a lot of money. Uh, it goes like a rocket. This is my um, Tony Hawk, uh, signed by Tony Hawk. A uh, good friend of mine knows Tony Hawk and went over to the uh, Birdhouse premiere and uh, got Tony Hawk to sign his Tony Hawk skateboard. Pretty rare. So this is my skateboard collection. These are boards that bring back memories from when I first started skateboarding. Towards the end of the Bones Brigade era, when um, cool shapes and rad graphics were all the go. We've got a, a signed Nicky Guerrero that's an original deck from the 80s. And probably one of my favourite parts of my collection would be my Mike Vallely wall. A couple of Vallely signatures in my little picture that I made. There's a few, a couple of rare ones there that you don't often get to see. Funny enough, my mum, who works at St Vinnie's, rang me up one day and said an old skateboard had come into work and did I want it? Not knowing what it was, I said, sure, let's chuck it in the boot and I'll come and have a look at it. And lo and behold, we had a surface amp. But I mean, in the, in the big scheme of things, this collection that I've got has got nothing on Bradley Sterrett's collection, which is definitely something that any skateboard collector would envy, especially me. Yeah, Bradley, I'm, I'm really stoked he's, he's, he's looking to collect all my decks. These right here are some of the gems, my first deck I ever owned. It's a Sims Kamikaze Mini, and of course I used to be on the Wild Skaters team, small skate shop on Hollister, and uh, of course I used to be pretty good at drawing little skulls. Wild Skater team, I've been promoting my sponsor since day one. This is a Barfoot deck. With another little school picture I drew on the bottom. And this is one of my web decks that I got from Dogtown when I first started riding for them. Of course, I made some changes in their deck because these decks were so big. And, of course, with the paint job. Yeah, those are the gems. How does it feel to want, Bradley? Welcome to the Hill Collection. This is my Frankie Hill Skateboard Collection. I was lucky to be good friends with Frankie and collected these over many, many years. As you can see by the size of the collection, I pretty much have every single deck that's ever been released in almost all the colours. I think there's a few decks I'm still waiting on to turn up, but pretty much what you can see is all the Frankie Hill decks. It's a pride and joy of my collection and I'll never part with it. This is just a section of a huge collection of skateboards you're about to see. This represents about half of our skateboard collection. As you can see, I got carried away a little bit. Yeah, a little bit much. Sometimes we've got to keep ourselves in check with what we spend and what we need to chase. And to be able to put this together is a big achievement. A lot of hard work, but so much fun. And keeps our spirits high. Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk in purple. It took me a while to get. They sold out straight away. It was a very popular deck, and I ended up having to buy two of them from America that were complete. Um, a lot of the boards we got are in shrink. We like to get them as new as possible and keep them in the best condition possible. A nice parallel bug there. That was a, a hard chase down that one. We won that one in a raffle, and we were very happy when we won that one. Some of the graphics, just beautiful pictures, you know, well drawn. And as you're a kid, that's what you wanted to see, your, your favourite board. Some of the decks we have here, one-off decks, some of the Frankie Hill decks he sent me. Covered in stickers, they're signed on both sides. Some are hand-painted. Now there's a couple of Steve Stedham's personal riders there. 
This is about the last 10 years of skateboard collecting for me, what you can see here in front of you. This is the first time I've even seen them all laid out in one spot. My lung capacity was at eight litres. My, all the liver functions come back at 100 to 130% working rate. So everything worked perfectly and fine. But the infection was trying to kill something in my body and it, they couldn't work out what it was. So now they've told me to basically train as hard as I can, work as hard as I can. At my age of 46, you feel a bit creaky bit groany but if they tell me it's helping the disease and stopping the progress of it I'm so be it I'm going to take that over medication any day This is the one we wanted, Dan. This is the one we wanted. Straight away. Straight away. Biggest barrel I've ever caught. I cannot believe I caught it today. One mud cod for bait. Five seconds out in the water and I pulled it in. Unbelievable. I'm so happy that everyone was here to see it too. I had no idea I had it. I seen the float go down, but it wasn't pulling any line at all. Then all of a sudden, a little bit of tension on the line, and it was off. And then it was the fight of my life. I did not want that fish to get loose. That was one that was coming home for sure. Yeah! Get that mate, cut out of his mouth. Get it back in there. <laughs> This is a big fish, Dan. This is something I've been waiting for my whole life. Now that is what you call a barra. Hey? I told you I'd do it for you, Dan. That's it. That's it. Now that's a barra, Dan. That is the one. That's the biggest one I've ever caught. Look at the mouth on this thing. It is huge. Can't believe seeing a fish that big come in. Something you don't get to see very often, a wild barrow of that size. You do get them, but not a very regular fish. Very happy for Brad. Very, very happy. And he just looked at me and said, I just wanted to be so happy when I left here. I wanted to be happy. I wanted you to be happy, to see me happy. And now this has happened. Why do things always happen to bring me down? Oh, I hope he contact, make contact with me and uh, you know, try and uh, maybe get over his past. Stay fit, stay healthy, stay happy. Make yourself positive every day. Wake up every morning and find something you want to do. And even if you can't do it, find the next best thing. <laughs>